Hey everybody, Sean Tierney here from theautomationschool.com and Happy New Year to all of you. This is our first episode of the Automation Show here for the new year. And in this show, we're going to continue working on the demo board behind me. And uh, this time, uh, we're going to do Data Highway Plus Messaging. We're going to use our L6 as a data concentrator, just like we did last time, where we were... Um, reading in data across the DH45 from the uh, Micrologix. But this time we're going to read in data from the PLC5 and SIG500 over uh, Data Highway Plus. And uh, I've removed the 503 and put in a 504. And uh, both uh, controllers has, have the same program from my VUSC course that the uh, Micrologix had. And so uh, we're going to do the D Data Highway Plus message read in the control logics now. This is a little tricky and some of the documentation is wrong and there's a little secret you got to know to make this work right and so we'll make sure we cover that today but before we get into that i wanted to thank all of my patrons uh, this is something i want to do uh, every week um, some of these patrons who uh, have been with me since uh, for over five years now and i just want to give a huge shout out to them if you'd like to become an insider and support our show the automation show and the automation blog.com and keep us on ear then um, check out our Patreon over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And I also want to thank my students over at theautomationschool.com. That's what I do for a living. That's how we keep the lights on and afford all this equipment. And I uh, just want to say a huge shout out to all my students. If you know anybody who needs affordable uh, automation training, PLCH, MySCADA, please check out theautomationschool.com. So with that said, let's go ahead and go over to the computer and take a look at the Data Highway Plus network I have here. It's a small one. I have more stuff in the garage that I can add over time, but uh, right now uh, I haven't found the right spot for it yet. So here you can see we're in the program from the last sh episode of the show, and uh, you can see it's reading every couple of seconds it's doing reading. I did put an AFI here just because uh, I ripped out the 503 and put a 504 in, so I didn't want to have to wait for that guy to time out, uh, you know, whenever it was going to time out. So what I want to do here is switch over to RS links. This is the back plane of this uh, chassis right behind me here. And if we look zero, one, two, three, four, data Highway plus is in slot four. And so we'll come over here and there it is the DHRIO. I'll open that up. I got channel A set the data highway plus, and you can see my PLC 520, which is right here. And my 504 is right here. You can see they're at address zero and one. And uh, I've powered off a lot of the other items uh, that also aren't Data Highway Plus. The, uh, you know, the ANC, I got a couple of these ANC cables, which we've covered in previous episodes. So um, just to keep the power, the power usage down here. And um, so that's it. That's what we're going to be talking to. So with that said, let's go ahead and minimize RS links. Let's go ahead and go offline here. Okay. And I'm going to save this file with a new name. So I'm going to do a file, save as, and let's save this as, I don't know, we'll call it DH4P for plus. And then I'm going to shorten this name too, because it's getting a little long here. We'll do point IO, flex IO, all in one. Okay, there's a limit of how long the name can be. So let me uh, save that. And then I kind of want to clean this program up a little bit. I want to um, put all the messaging in a subroutine. So um, matter of fact, let's go ahead and rename these routines. This is something I teach in my courses and uh, it just makes everything uh, cleaner. So I'm going to come in here and I'm going to go to properties. We're going to name this R00 underscore main. Okay, we'll call this properties. Just call this R10. And I don't need that all caps. I think that's because I imported it from the RS Logics 500. And then we'll make one more, call it R20, and we'll call it MSG. Okay. All right, excellent. So now what I want to do is grab these two rungs out of lights, Control X and Control V, copy paste. Let's get rid of this empty rung here. And now I'll just go back to the main routine. We'll throw a little uh, branch around this guy. And I'll even use the control drag to copy him. And now we'll just select R20. All right. So that should keep all the messages in this one 
um, routine kind of makes things easier. It was kind of getting messy having everything in the same routine. So now what we're going to do here is we're going to add a new rung. And I think I'm going to use the same message timer here. Okay. And then we're going to want a message. Let me go ahead and steal one of these guys. And I got, I'm going to need one read for the slick and one read for the PLC five. So let's come over here and let me rename these. We'll do message read. We'll call this one, let's say PLC five and we'll call this one SLC four because it's a 504. You can call yours whatever you want if you're if you're trying to follow along. So let me go ahead and make a new message. Create new message. Create. I'm I'm making all of these just in the controller tags. In my courses, I actually we actually split them up uh, between controller and program tags, uh, just because long term that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so we get those done now. Before I can set these up, let me see if I can zoom in on that. Okay, before I go and set these up. Um, I want to come down here and add, it just makes it easier if you add your DH uh, plus module to the backplane. Now, originally when, when back in the late nineties, you used to get a yellow triangle if you didn't put any IO on it, you know, cause it's a DHRIO module. And if you didn't put any remote IO on it, you'd get a yellow triangle saying, Hey, you don't have any IO on this connection. And a lot of people get confused. And um, you really don't, if you're just using Nate Highway Plus, you don't have to put it into the, um, into the IO tree. But I like to, it's, it's like document, documenting your program. And uh, eventually Rockwell relented and stopped giving it a yellow triangle if, if it didn't have any IO on it. So um, in any case, let's go ahead and put a new module here. And I will just type in DHRIO. Okay, create. I think mine's a five. We can go back to links and find out here. Device properties, yeah, five. And it's a series C. Okay, so we'll do five. And channel A is DHRIO. And channel B is RIO. Maybe we'll set up RIO in the future. I'd love to get my hands on a, uh, I've been looking, they're not, they're very hard to find at a reasonable price, a remote IO adapter for Flex IO. I'd love to get one of those. Um, in any case, let me go ahead and put that in. Oh, you're going to name it because it's the network module. So I'm just going to call it DHRIO. This is just our wall demo here. And oh, not slot three, it's slot four, right? Zero, one, two, three, four. Yep. Okay. So we should be good there. Excellent. You can see it down here. Notice the DH plus doesn't show up. Only the remote IO shows up. So um, in any case, the next thing I want to do is I'm going to want to um, open this up. And I'm going to want to do a PLC five uh, type read source element. If you remember from last week, my, uh, the code I used for my VSE course has a bunch of injection molding machines and their data is in the, in the older PLCs is an N750 and it's 50 uh, elements long. There is a limit on these older controllers, how many you can do, but 50 is fine. The destination, so I have to make this new tag here. So I'm just going to follow along with what I did last week. I'll call it PLC5 underscore data. New tag, and I'm going to make this an array of 50 ints. I want ints because that's what's in the PLC5 integers, not double integers. Okay, good. Does that all look right? Yep. Okay, create. Okay, now the communication part. Now, if you look at the pathing, it'll tell you to put the whole path out to the uh, controller, but that doesn't work because that, that's what I tried and it didn't work at all. And um, so then I found um, somewhere else, it was kind of obscure, obscure, but where I found it was, it told me the correct path. So that's what we're going to put in. So what we'll do is we'll select our... DHRIO. Now you could do backplane slot four. If you did type that in, it would just replace it. Matter of fact, let's do it. So let's go to help. And uh, you can see I'm here. Is this the right one? I usually look for message path, list topics, specify path. And then you can see it tells you uh, one for the backplane. And then the slot would be the next thing. Okay. 
So go out. So if I do one comma four to go out the back plane to slot four and look at, you see it, it already identified we had a module there. Now you'll see in the documentation, it says, we'll then put, uh, you know, the port on the DHRIO and then the address on the network in octal, like eight pound in the address. So eight pound zero, eight pound one, which you don't even need because zero and one is the same in octal as well as decimal. But in any case, um, that doesn't work. <laughs> I don't know why, but it doesn't work. So, um, what you do want to do, and this is the secret, it's, 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 it's weird, but it's what you need to do. You come over here and you choose data highway plus, right? We're going to do the, the, uh, source link and destination link as one each. And the destination node for the PLC is zero. Okay. And I know that seems really weird, right? And then we're going to go to tag. Oh, we don't have to go to tag. So let's apply that. Oh, I got an extra comma here because I never finished filling in. Let me apply that. See how it replaced it with the HRIO. Okay. So that's that one. Now let's do this guy. Okay. So this is going to be a slick type read. Uh, source element will be same thing n seven colon 50 number of elements, 50 destination element. We're going to make it. What do we call this? MSG read. SLC four underscore whoops data. All right. We'll make a new tag. This again will be an int 50 create. Okay. Now communication path. This time we'll just pick it. Okay. Good. DH plus channel a the links. I'll make both one and this time the node will be one apply and okay. All right. Now, where does those links come from? Well, typically if you're going to set up your DHRIO for bridging, right? Um, that's how you're going to set it up. Okay. And, and really port one is link one and port two is link two, but I can show you, you can actually change that definition. Let me go right into the uh, DHRIO module, go to module configuration, routing table, say link one, link two, these could be um, something different if you, if you had multiple modules, but, um, and if this is a brand new module, you may have to set that. Okay. I know I had to set mine. So, um, if I reset it to defaults, you can see undefined, undefined, but it's very, uh, very easy here to, um, let's see, add these back in here. Okay. Now it's trying to download what I did, which is the same as what's in there. So, but in any case uh, we can't see it, but the module reboots when you do that. So you want to take those warnings to know, again, we're working here in the, on the demos. So we don't have to worry about that, but in the plant, all of the, every, every one of those warnings needs to be looked at and read and understood. Um, in any case, is it going to work? I don't know. Oh, that, Hey, let's rename our controller too. This name is getting pretty old here. So let's see here. You know, I'm going to rename it to tab V20 looking at the, looking at the file name L 63 DH four P P F I O. How's that? Okay. Nice note to match. Okay. So let's save communications to active. There she is. Let's download to her. Hey, danger, Will Robinson, danger. Okay, one warning. Do you want to go back to run mode? Sure. Okay, and look at, they're working. Whoops, come on, work with me now. There we go. So look, enable done, enable done. I think I got the timer, is the timer on two seconds? So let's go and check the tags to see if they're showing up there. And let's see here, monitor tags. We're looking for PLC five data and yep. Seven, 13. You can see some of these numbers changing in here. Excellent. Now let's look at SLC four data. Yep. It's updating too. So the secret was, and this is very important. 
The secret was on the communication. Don't put in the whole path, right? Put in the path to your Data Highway Plus module, right? And then do this. Channel A, source destination the same, and then the node address. And that works like a charm. Um, that's how I got it to work. I mean, if you've gotten it to work a different way, please let me know. But um, I tried several different ways and it didn't work. Uh, but with that said, I want to thank you for watching the show. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode, please consider giving us a like and a sub. And if you'd like to become an insider, support the show, support the blog, and help us keep going, then consider becoming a patron over at patreon.com forward slash automation. And if you know anybody who needs to learn PLCs, uh, control logics, compact logics, micro 800, micro logics, panel view plus, view SC, and more, please send them over to the automationschool.com. Just redid the whole site, spent a lot of time last week working on it, completely updated it and uh, kind of changed the design, the colors. There's this new, um, focused mode now when you take lessons it looks kind of like some of the other you know the big people who teach you know it courses you know some of those websites so um i'm really proud with the way it came out and now i'm getting ready to film new lessons i'm doing the compact logics level one and two this week so a lot of exciting stuff happening over there um and with that said i just want to wish you all a great week and until next time my friends peace <laughs>